Hello and welcome back to another episode of my MotoGP 21 career mode and it's been a very very long time since the previous episode so I don't even 100% remember what was happening in the championship at the time where we left off so we might need a little refresher so if we quickly have a look at the championship standings we are very close to some loads as you can see there's only 11 points in it and I believe the last race we did was Silverstone. So I think the next race we're doing is Aragon. So I think in this episode it's going to be Aragon and Misano. Are the two races we're going to have to do. But thinking back to the last episode actually. We were battling at the British Grand Prix with Sam Lowe's. We collided. We both went down. So neither of us scored any points. Which helped out Remy Gardner and Marco Bezzecchi close quite a bit up to us in the championship. But as you can see they're still fairly out of it. Gardner, to be fair, might have an outshot shot with two race wins down, and I suppose Bezeki's only a further 10 points behind him then, but they are quite a way out of this hunt, considering there's only about five, six races left. They are falling out of contention quite quickly, but I suppose Gardner, if he does get on a really good run of form, and myself and Sam do collide a couple more times, he definitely could be back in the running for the championship. But it seems like we've got a little bit of a break here, actually just one week, so we'll advance forward that one week, which should take us up to the Aragon GP, you can see there's no notifications or anything, so time to head into it. The AI are not too bad around this circuit, so it's going to be tough. I think we'll have a better one at Masano, but of course we've got to do Aragon first. So I'll see you at the end of practice. I'm going to have to do a lot of laps to get back up to speed on this Moto2 bike. So then, as you can see, there's about 50 seconds to go in practice, and it's been a tough session. It's been such a tough session. As you can see on the right-hand side, I have improved my time overall and if you look at where I started I was starting in the, like, the 56s so I've made so much progress in this session because I'm only about seven tenths off the top time but I just don't have enough tires and enough time in this session to sort of actually do a decent decent lap basically obviously like I said at the start of the video it's been so long since I've done career mode and I've not been playing MotoGP too much recently it's been more rims racing WRC a couple of different kind of game so I've, I've needed to get back up to speed with MotoGP which I think I probably have about done now but unfortunately I've had to use a soft tire on the front the last couple of laps and it's it's dreadful. That's just down to the allocation I wanted to save mediums and hards for qualifying in the race so I've had to use a soft tire and unfortunately I've not then really been able to have the benefit of uh, doing a much better lap. I've done a slightly better lap because I used power mode 3 to try and boost myself up the order but the front was so poor on the brakes, I was just losing all the time throughout the lap, so... Unfortunately, we are going to have to go through qualifying 1, because you can see we're only in 16th place. But I'd say overall, it's still been a fairly positive session, just with the amount of improvement, and the fact that I am sort of back on the pace. I was thinking that I would be absolutely nowhere near the AI, but now that I've bedded into the track a little bit, I am a bit closer. I did expect to struggle a little bit here anyway, even if I had been playing the game quite consistently. But you can see, I'm only a couple attempts really off the top 10. And really, I'm only 7 attempts off pole, well, off the fastest time. Now, I know they're going to improve into qualifying, because they always do. They always find a little bit more time, so I think we'll have to be in the 52s to qualify well. Which is going to be tough, because I'm only just in the 53s. So, I think this is going to be a tough weekend. Uh, no, I didn't get any R&D at all, which I don't think I actually have to anymore anyway. I think I've got enough, so I think it's alright on that front, but... Because I wasn't really on the pace, I couldn't get the objectives. That's usually how it goes. If you're struggling, you struggle to get any of them. So, yeah, it's going to be a bit of a tough qualifying one session, but we'll see if we can get out of it. I've got some medium tyres, which should be much better. If we can get a bit of a toe, use a bit of power mode three, you never know what might happen. We might be able to get our way through, and if we can get through, then we've got a chance of scoring something decent in the race, because you know how it is in the race. If you can get away with the AI at the front, you can sometimes surprise yourself a little bit. It is worth noting it's actually cloudy in this session, so that might affect the tyres a little bit. So a soft tyre might be more viable in this session now. Um, depends how I'm doing with the time, but maybe I'll have to try it. Maybe on the rear, at least. Uh, the front is just... it pushes too much and you can't you can't use the soft. It just kind of squidges all over the place. It's impossible to turn in to brake. But interestingly enough, Augusto Fernandez is in this session as well. So we've actually got some fast riders. I think Canit was in here as well. So it's not going to be easy to get out at all. It's going to be tough. Hopefully we can do it, because top four go through it's so the top 18 isn't it in qualifying two and we were in the top 18 in free practice so potentially we could go through because we only missed out by a small amount but it is going to be tough uh, we're going to struggle for the tires as well because we've only got two sets well two brand new sets of mediums basically left to use and that's going to last us for potentially q1 and q2 but we probably won't go through so if i have to use both in this session that's fine because that's going to boost me up the grid further so 
We'll head out onto the track now then, and we've just got to get it, give it everything we've got. So I'm guessing we got shuffled down a bit more in the uh, remaining free practice sessions, because we're currently 12th on the leaderboard, so... Yeah, we obviously are very, very far down, unfortunately. The grip does feel somewhat better, though, on a brand new fresh set of tyres, compared to what I was just doing in practice, so... I'll push for this lap. I've just got to make sure I don't overshoot the braking zones. That's my main. That's been my main problem in the first sector, at least. Uh, that I'm trying to gain all my time on the brakes, and I've overshot the two crucial braking zones, and it just costs you the whole way through the sector. So first lap, 53-3. So much better than anything I did in practice already. So that's, a, that's definitely a good way to start the session. I doubt that'll be enough, though. I doubt. I think we'll have to be in the 52s to do well, but. Wow, that was actually a very good lap compared to what I did. So I knew other, I knew there was more time on the table if I used medium, medium. I'm actually quite impressed because that's six tenths of a second. And I thought it was actually not a good lap, to be honest. I thought there was quite a few mistakes. So I'm hoping that we should have decent pace. But like I was saying, we need to be in the, the 52s to go through. Because there's a lot of red indicators on the left-hand side. So I don't think this 53 is going to hold us for very long. So I've been relegated to second by Augusto Fernandez already. But only by a couple of tenths of a second, so it's not too bad. I could potentially find that if I do a slightly better lap on this second one. Now that I've got a banker in, I feel like I can push a little bit more. Just through the last corner, sliding the rear a bit up towards the line. Hopefully we don't quite run out of fuel. We just about did! We just improved! We all we were going to go top of the session, actually, I think, if we didn't run out of fuel there. But I'm going to head back to the pits as quickly as I can, and then come straight back out again. There's only 56 seconds left, so I'm guessing... It took into account the fact that I'd run out of fuel, so we've got to look at the session. We're currently in third position. You can see Navarro is, in fact, in the 1 minute 52s. I'm quickly doing a pit start to stop the simulated times, so they don't knock me out of the top four with some weird simulated times, because you know what this game is like sometimes when you're not on track. They will do times that are slightly faster. Yeah, there we go then. Top three in the session. That's exactly what I needed to go through into qualifying two, and we have a set of mediums to spare, so... To be honest, that session couldn't have really gone much better, considering the lap wasn't fantastic. We ran out of fuel, in fact, on the run-up to the line, so if I hadn't done that, I think we probably would have gone top. I think we could have been potentially in the 1 minute 52s, or maybe, if not top, it would have been faster than Fernandez and just a little bit off Navarro. So, yeah, I'm happy that we've gone through. But let's get into qualifying 2 now and see if we get a good grip position, because we really need it for the championship. Sam, Sam is a little bit too far in front of me for my liking. So interestingly enough in this session then, Bobier is actually already through into Q2 and in FP1 he was really far off the pace, so that's surprising to see. Same with Baldessari to be honest. So I'm going to stick on medium mediums once again, not the same one, so I accidentally just, well I actually just put a soft tyre on by accident because the medium is recommended for qualifying and the race. However, I think the hard tyre might be the better option in the race. I ran it in free practice one, it felt good, the grip was good, I got the heat into it. And that's all that really matters, because the grip between the tyres, the medium and the hard, is not a lot. And as long as they both manage the heat pretty well, then you're pretty much perfect. Because I think the medium's probably not going to quite do it in the sunny conditions, which is what the race is in. So I think using the hards for the race is the better idea. So we can use all the mediums we want in this session. But we'll head out onto the track now then. I'm going to do a pit start once again, just to try and minimise these simulated times. We've got to play the game in our own favour, because I am a little bit down on my luck. I'm not, not quite on the pace. So I've got myself in just behind Canet. It's not actually deliberate, he just ended up sort of in front of me. Uh, yeah, I think he overtook me because I was trying to get the heat in my tyres, so... Hopefully he'll help me out, or at least give me a slipstream anyway. Because he might get in my way otherwise, because we're going to... Well, we're already on the back of him, so we're just going to go flying past him on the run into the first corner. So that's Canet dispatch. Just hopefully he doesn't try and die for me around the rest of the lap or something. You know what they are like. So Bezeki's currently quickest with a 52.9, which is the same time that was fastest in Q1. So yeah, it does seem like uh, the pace of Q1 is going to be similar to the pace of Q2, at least for now. They usually do improve a little bit throughout the session. But I did just mess up the last corner, so we'll have to see what this time is as we come up towards the line. I'm at 51, 52, 53, 53.5, 5, so not quite as good there. It was faster than what Canet did, but yeah, I need to probably improve a little bit on this next lap to try and get a bit closer to... Bezeki, but currently ninth place, not the end of the world, but I'd still like a little bit more, especially since Navarro is still ahead of me. So coming towards the line then, this one wasn't any better, I backed off because it was a bit too slow in the middle of the lap. I wanted to save some fuel so we could go for this one more lap, because of course it's the only set of medium mediums I've got, so I want to make the most of them. So 
throughout the last quarter. This one has been an improvement by only by a couple of attempts, so I don't think it's going to move me up the order too much. In fact, it didn't at all. I don't even know if the time actually improved by the end, I think. No, it actually was slower by three tenths, even though all the way up until the end, the Delta was saying it was faster. So, that's a, that's annoyed me a bit, actually. Uh, so, we're going to head back to the pits then, but I think we are going to be out of time in this session, so I think it's going to be 15th on the grid. So, yeah, not ideal. Actually, we've got four minutes left, so we have got enough time, actually, if we do stick on a new set of tyres. And unfortunately, they are going to have to be soft-softs, because you see we haven't got enough left on the mediums. Maybe this middle one, actually, we could maybe do another lap on or so, but... I think soft soft is going to be the way to go. Soft soft power three. Just absolutely go for it on this last lap. Risk of crash and everything. Just to see if we could try and move up a little bit more on the grid. Because at the minute, obviously, 15th is not really good enough. When... Oh, Vietti's just gone top. So Vietti's just popped it in first place. Another 52-9. So I know the top three are all on a 52-9. So unfortunately... It, it just hasn't worked out. Look at the rear tyre. It's red. It's even worse than actually was in sunny conditions. And I don't know whether that's because I'm pushing more. Or whether it's because I've just turned the engine braking down a tad. I don't think that would wear the rear more, though. I would have thought I would wear it less, but... I'm not too sure, to be honest. I'm, yeah, look at that. It's, I can't get on the power at all. Especially in Power 3. But up towards the line, then. It's going to be 16th place on the grid. That is not good for a championship hunt. So it's actually Ralph Fernandez that ends up on pole position. So a flurry of times right at the end of 52-6 for Fernandez. So that's absolutely unbelievable that he's managed to pull that one off then. So Ralph Fernandez on pole, led of Augusto Fernandez in second, two tenths behind on a 52-8. Then Vietti, Lowe's, Bezecchi, Schrotter, and Agora all on a 52-9. That's how close this grid is. Absolutely unbelievable. Then Gardner, Digi Antonio, both on a 53-0. 53-1. For Roberts and Ben Schneider. 53-2 for Bobier, 53-3 for Canit. 53-3 as well for Arbelina. 53-4 for Navarro. And a 53-5 for myself. So, not quite on the pace. Luckily, we're not actually really last in this session. We just beat out Baldessario and Manzi by a few hundredths of a second there. And if we managed to find the Q1 pace, we would have been up in about 12th position. Which wouldn't have been too bad. But I just, I wasn't feeling it in that session. I'm not sure what it was. If I if I had another set of medium mediums, I think I probably could have gone for a good lap at the end. But the tyre allocation has really gone against me, unfortunately, this weekend. Uh, there's not there's not enough mediums. I think that's probably just how the rules are in real life. But there's just not enough medium tyres and the soft tyres trash in this game. But we're heading to the race now then. Sam Lowe's in fourth place. Myself down in 16th. It's going to have to be an aggressive first lap. And we've just got to hope it's going to be a nice pack race at the front that we can try and maybe slip stream my way through a little bit. Not sure how many laps we're going to have as well. Uh, obviously that could come into it, but I do need to be very, very aggressive off the start and I can't make any mistakes. So then, I've got a teammate on pole position, so I've got to hope that he, he helps me out a tad. Uh, also, obviously, Augusto Fernandez is up there. His visor is missing, though, by the looks of it. A little bit strange there. Has Jake Dixon got his visor? Um, yes. No, no, yes, yes, he has. So I don't know whether I've just seen that wrong, but I'm sure Augusto Fernandez had no visor on his helmet. So I, I think that might be a bit illegal. So maybe he'll get disqualified. But either way, enough of the jokes. I'm going to go onto the hard tyres, front and rear, like I was saying, in practice. Purely just because I think that's just been the better tyre, especially for the sunny conditions. I'm not sure how many laps there is exactly. If I have a look at the fuel quickly just to see. Yeah, so five. it's a five lap race. So yeah, I think uh, hard, hard probably is the way to go. You could probably get away with it on a set of mediums, but I mean, I don't have any left anyway, so I'm definitely not using a set of softs for this race, that's for sure. So yeah, hard, hard is all I can go for. And really, I've just got to get it, give it everything, because if I do poorly here, we can pretty much say with what, it'd be five races left after that, I think, or actually might be six. I think, yeah, I think it is six races left. I think that's almost us out of the championship if Sam scores well and we don't. So I need to get as high up the order as I can. Even if I finish just a couple of spots behind him, that's pretty damage limitation. But obviously I can't be finishing outside the points whilst he's up in like fourth place or something. So yeah, it's going to be it's gonna be a tough start. We're going to have to go for it. We're going to have to get his elbows out and hope maybe there's some carnage in front. Final riders have taken their place on the grid. Everything is ready. Just a few seconds to go and we'll get lights out at Motorland Aragon for the start of the race. I'm just happy that the sort of LODs are fixed now, so the uh, liveries don't look really, really weird. But here we are then, waiting for the lights to go out. Lights out, away we go. My reaction time has not been too bad, actually, with the power three that might help as well. We've lost a little bit. We've got a little bit of a screen freeze there. 
go down towards the first corner. Oh, I thought I broke a bit too late. That I thought it was going to clatter in some. We've had someone on the inside on an MV Augusta. So we've actually lost a position. We've lost two positions off the start now. So we're down to 18th. That is a disaster because I needed to make progress forward. And I'm already losing positions. And we're right on the back of Xavi Vierge. Unfortunately, we haven't quite been able to get past him yet. We're right behind him there. We've got the inside of Vierge. We're closing up to the back of Baldessari. I'm going to try and get my elbows out the inside of him as well on the power. Try to get Arbelina. We couldn't quite get Arbelina on the exit there. I've got a trailer this warning. I was going to look at the inside of Arbelina there, but I just couldn't quite get to the inside fast enough. But on the curb at the inside, on the power again. A lot of spin from the rear tyre already, so even though it's a hard... Seems to be struggling, so I think we are going to struggle with the tyres in this race. Can we get the inside of Arbelino here? Looks like we can, potentially. Can we also then try and get Navarro? And then it's Canet, I think, as well. So we're now up into the points again. So we're up into 15th. Ralph Fernandez still leads the race. Augusto Fernandez is second. Vietti third. So I think Sam probably still is in, a, well, fourth at best, anyway. Here we go. Into turn 12 on the brakes. Side by side with the two Bosco Scuros. Oh, Navarro hangs it around the outside. I'm going to try and get past Canet, though. Canet's then got the inside, and that's going to leave the inside open. Thought Arbelino was going to come back up the inside, which I couldn't afford whatsoever. Well, the inside of Canet, we go. I'm all out of shape. All completely out of shape. Somehow there's not been a crash. A little bit of touching. Right on the back of Canet once again. So here we try to fire it out of the corner once again. We've not got the drive. I've had no drive out of that corner compared to the AI all throughout the weekend. And I think that's a lot of where my pace is. Where, where I lose the times throughout the lap. But here we go. And then flying past Canet with that power mode 3. We're going to have to use a lot of that in this race, I think. But into the last corner, I've gone in a bit hot. There's been a crash. Bobier's down. Someone else is down in front as well. I'm not sure who that was. Can it back up the inside. So a bit of contact with Aaron Can it. But somebody else was down with Bobier. I think there was a clip the inside curve. But here we go. Then we've got a good run once again on Aaron Can it. So up into 12th position. So it's not been a terrible opening lap. But of course, we did just get given two positions uh, by those crashes. I'm not sure who it was. I think it might have been an Itar trans. So I don't think it was Sam or anything like that. So. Can't get too excited. It could well have been Bezeki, I suppose, if there was a bit of blue, because I can see that Vietti is still there. But either way, I need to get my head down now, try and get back onto the back of Navarro and see if we can make up some positions. I'm really struggling with the edge of the tyre here. You can see how hot it is. I um, just can't get past Navarro. I've caught up to him. We're going to go for it to the first corner on the inside of Jorge Navarro. No, that's a, I've overshot that one, that's for sure. So, oh, that cost me a lot of time as well, actually, because I bounced over that curb, so that wasn't ideal. But I really need to get past it because you see that little group in front is actually starting to get away. But I've just not got the pace. I'm struggling so much at this track. So then, on the penultimate lap of the race now, I'm going even slower every lap. Although I did do the dive on my Navarro on the previous one. And once again, I've ran wide into the first corner. It's just so tricky to get that braking right. Especially when I've been using Power Mode 3 to try and close in on Jorge. But I think 11th is the best I'm going to get now. If I can try and pass him, it's unfortunate because we almost got him on the first lap. Then we could have had the rest of the race try and pass Ben Schneider, but unfortunately, I couldn't quite do it on the first lap. When I was trying to pass him and Canet at the same time, he managed to just hang in there. You can see, I am on course for a new personal best. That was my best first sector so far of the race, which is promising, but we are running out of time, because I've only got this and the next lap to pass him. The race has actually flown by. We've got to hope there's some more chaos in front, but I think fortunately Sam is still in fourth, so he's not actually on the podium, which is... Uh, Definitely good, although there's not a lot of difference in it with the points. So here we are then, we're right behind Navarro, we're closing on him quite a lot. We're going to have to probably go for it to turn 12. Oh, I'm all out of shape up the inside of Navarro, we go. Here we got a little bit of contact with him, we've forced him right onto the curb, maybe a little bit off the circuit, around the outside of hallway now, but he's forcing me back again. Come on, we're losing so much time to the riders in front. Obviously he doesn't want to give up this position at any cost. We're going to try and get him down the straight, but the AI just gets so much drive out this corner. I've just gassed it full just to try and match him, and we kind of have, but that's with the Palmer 3 as well. We've definitely lost any chance of beating Ben Schneider now. We go flying past Jorge Navarro. I've got 1.3 seconds to, to bow Ben Schneider ahead after all that battling, so we're definitely not catching up to him. I thought we probably wouldn't beat him anyway, but we're definitely not now. Navarro's looking at the inside, but we've just got up into 11th place. Got to say, it's not been too bad. Five positions up. But there was, of course, two crashes in front of us, which definitely helps. 53-3. So I could do a 53-3 in the race, but I couldn't do it in Q2 when I needed to do one, unfortunately. What's the gap? Still 1.3. I'm just going to give it everything I've got. Oh, well, actually, I'm very low on fuel. I've got to watch out for that. But yeah, I'm going to try everything, because I think they might be battling in front a little. So I might be able to capitalise on that. 
So here we are then, down towards the last corner. Arbolino's definitely got the advantage on me because he's just got so much more drive. The AI just gains so much there. You can't compete when they gain this much. But as we go down towards the last corner, we've got to be careful. I've got to go in deep. But I think that could be curtains. I've got a bit too wide. There's a bit of crash. Arbolino's on the inside though. I think Arbolino's got me. So we're back down into 11th position. Okay, so we actually gained a position. So someone in front must have crashed because we got up into the top 10 very briefly there. So I wonder who it was. It was Sam. It was Sam. Sam crashed. Oh my word. Sam Lowe's crashed. No way. I saw a yellow into the last turn. And then I saw that Arbolino was 10th when he was up the inside of me. And I was like, we were battling for 11th. So somehow, an absolute disaster weekend has turned into us probably halving Sam Lowe's championship advantage. That's absolutely unbelievable. I need to have a look at that on the replay, but whoa, unbelievable. I mean, good job to Ralph Fernandez and also to Remy Gardner there for bringing home some decent points for the team. So yes, then, I actually close up in the championship to only six points behind Sam Lowe's now. So this championship is well and truly still on with a few rounds to go. Remy Gardner is only 40 points back now, so I would say he's brought himself back into it. Same with Marco Bezzecchi, to be honest. They're both back into it. Ralph Fernandez, if he continues his good run of form, he could most certainly get back into it. He's only 70 points behind, so... Yeah, I know that's almost getting on for three race wins worth, but there's still enough races left where if he keeps performances like that and myself and Sam finish a little bit further down, he could definitely capitalise. So the team's championship, though, we actually have a pretty commanding lead now over Elfmark VDS Racing. 114 points, so I think we might actually be able to win this one. Uh, obviously, I know there could be big swings. There could be a swing of 45 points, which is the maximum you can gain on a team per weekend, but... They, they could do that twice and we'd still have a healthy-ish lead. Well, not healthy-ish, it would be about 24, so not terrible. So I think, to be honest, we probably are going to win this team's championship, so that's looking good for us. And all of a sudden, SkyVR46 actually brought themselves back into contention, really, against uh, Mark VDS. So I think we've got it wrapped up for the team's championship, but between SkyVR46 and Elf Mark VDS, it's all to play for. But I'm going to quickly have a look then to see what lap Sam Lowe's crashed on. I think it was that very last one. And I want to see what happened as well because a few riders did crash throughout that race at the final corner. I'm not 100% sure who they were. Of course, we saw Bobier go down the first lap. Someone with him. It was an Ital Trans bike. So I think it was Joe Roberts. I think I saw Joe Roberts DNF'd on the screen. So that would make sense because obviously Bezeki actually carried on. I thought it could have been Bezeki, but obviously it wasn't him. And we'll have a quick look then. Okay, that's a weird looking crash. Is it just like a clip the inside kerb? Yes. So Joe Roberts clips it with his front tyre and down he goes. And I'm guessing the his fellow American, Cameron Bobier, did the exact same thing. If we go swap to him. Into the last corner. Yep, just clips it. So the AI just clipping their front wheels on that kerb. And down they go. And that has been our saving. We got a few free positions for that. And on top of that, Sam Lowe's then ended up doing it. So this has basically saved our championship. This uh, weird issue of them clipping the kerb. So there we are on the final lap then. He's really looking for a move on Vietti. He can't do it. So they're going into the last corner. And yeah, he just clipped his front tyre. And down he goes. Such a silly mistake on the last lap because he had such a lead over me. He was guaranteed to beat me. Sam Lowe sort of just bottling what could have been a decisive moment in the championship for him. Because he would have gained probably a good 10 points on me. Maybe not quite that much. But he would have gained a decent amount which would have been putting him close to a race win in front again. So then, after looking at that little incident, let's head into the career hub. It's not going to be very good for me because I really failed on the team's objectives. Didn't bring home any research data, so our reputation is going to take a hit. We're going to probably only get about 10 credits, but we still gained in the championship. Our reputation is good enough to get a decent MotoGP ride, so it shouldn't really affect us too much. So unfortunately, we lost 9,975 reputation, which takes us down to 288,300. And we actually gained 300 credits because we brought it home in 11th, so that takes us up to 201,678. And then that was it, there was no research data screen because we didn't get any. But there is something else to do here. The engine has now finished being upgraded, at least the most recent upgrade. And you can see there is actually three engine upgrades that could be done. So I think it's definitely worth going to have a look at those. They are for fuel consumption reduction, which obviously don't make a big difference because the bike's really good on fuel anyway, but... The more Power Mode 3 you can use, the better. So we'll we'll do this one here. So we'll develop that. That's only going to take three weeks. So we're actually going to get some of these engine upgrades quite thick and fast here. But that was it in terms of notifications. So next thing to do then is to head into Masano. A track that in the past has not been a strong one for the AI. And after I've had a whole race weekend to get back up to speed, 
this could be quite good. I think we can maybe strike back and potentially even fight for the championship lead at this race because uh, I think we could be back battling at the front. It won't be battling for sort of tenth place because Misano. It's not a track I would say I particularly like, really, really like or anything. It's just a track where, compared to the AI, I've gone pretty well. If you ignore Moto Three where I crashed on last year's game. On last year's game, I I used to dominate here, so you'd assume that I should still be fairly strong. So about halfway through this free practice session then, and you can see it's been a pretty good one. We are sat in second position, so a big improvement compared to the last round. If you look at the times on the right hand side as well, they're fairly consistent, even with pretty destroyed tyres. We've done a couple of the objectives as well, so I'm pretty confident to go through into qualifying two, and I think we've got good pace. I think we can fight for the win, we can fight for pole here, because I've done all these laps on the same set of tyres, so if I got a brand new fresh set, I could definitely go a few temps quicker, so I could, I think I could match the pace improvement of the AI and using Power Mode 3 as well in qualifying, whereas I've been using Power Mode 2 so far in the practice. I think we can fight for the pole, fight for the win, so I'm pretty happy to head into qualifying too so we should go straight through without any issues because we're currently second in this session so Lowe's actually top of the session I suppose he wants to try and bounce back from Aragon but this time he's got to contend with three IO bikes in second third and fourth we're all within about half a tenth of each other so super super close obviously that's the maximum you could get out of the IO Calyx it seems is the uh, 38.6 because we're all within that same tenth of a second Tony Arbolino in fifth place so Arbolino in the last race obviously managed to just beat me to the line and doing pretty well in this session as well. Tom Lutie in ninth, so both the SAG bikes right up there in 7th and ninth positions. Sometimes these free practices are a little bit weird, but it is super, super close. But I think I might be able to have just a bit of an edge. For some reason, Hector Garzo is 8 seconds off. Not sure what that's really about, but um, I'm sure he'll want to improve in the upcoming free practice sessions. But we should go straight through to qualifying too, so I'll see you there. So we've actually been knocked down a fair bit, you can see, uh, on the left-hand side. So the AI definitely found a little bit more time in those free practice sessions. So this could definitely be close. Uh, you can see it is currently cloudy, so the conditions are a tad different, but I think we should be all right. This weekend, we're going to be absolutely fine in terms of tyre allocation, because obviously I've used a lot less in practice, because I only used one set of tyres, and that does make a big difference. Although in terms of the, the medium tyres, there's only a couple left. Although I'm still not sure about my race tyre, what to go with. Yeah, I don't know whether to go with the hard or the medium, because the medium is a really nice tyre. It felt really good, and I haven't done any running on the hard at all, but after about three laps... The right hand side was quite destroyed, although my times, as you saw, were still pretty good throughout the whole stint. So I think the medium tyre should actually work uh, throughout the whole race. I think the race is sunny again, but I actually can't really remember uh, from the forecast. I think, uh, I think this must be about the only cloudy session, because I didn't even think there was a cloudy session this weekend. But I can feel immediately how much better the grip is, so uh, I could probably find a good half a second probably on what I did in practice. Because those were on destroyed tyres. Obviously the, the earlier laps that were the same pace on the brand new tyres. Were obviously not as, were not ridden as well. So I think we can make the difference here. Speaking of uh, Sam Lowe's coming up the pits then. He might try and tag on the back of us. Hopefully not though. But I've completely messed this lap up so far. It's been absolutely dreadful. Look how hot we ran in there. So uh, well, Sam's now in front of us. So I think we're going to have to go on the next lap. Uh, only four attempts off after all that as well. Although 39-0. Uh, currently what is top of the session is not not very good so towards the line then this lap's obviously not gonna be very representative although it's gone top anyway it's 38 7 even though i ma ran massively wide at rio so yeah definitely a lot more time on the table i think i did a 38 6 in the previous session so i was only a tenth off my personal best what's running off the circuit uh, but we have got a nice marker of sam lowe's here although honestly i think in these first few sectors he'll get in my way because i was red in the first three sectors in practice it was only the last sector that ai were better Okay, so eight tenths underneath in this first sector. Here we go, though. We've got a slipstream off Sam Lowe's. I've got to remember we've got to break quite early for Quircher because of that. So I'm going to break about here. And I've done a big stoppy. We've had contact with Sam. Oh, that's completely messed us both of us. Sam's down. Oh, that is controversial in the championship. Ooh, that's not ideal. But we are still going red, apparently. So actually, I'm going to carry on. I was going to slow down, but... Unfortunately, neither of my laps have been very good so far but that one contact with Lowe's yeah not ideal don't want to be causing friction with the title rival but we've already collided once probably from a bit of a dodgy move from myself and then once again however in this session I was just trying to actually make a pass on him because he was in my way it wasn't for a, a position or anything it's just I braked like what I thought was probably a reasonable time but uh, I think I just overall made a mistake yeah 37-8 then 
seems, for the AI at the minute. And the, the lap time has definitely gone away as well. So I shouldn't have actually bothered uh, saying Empowerment 3 because I thought it was still improvement, but... Yeah, this time is uh, no good really, so we need to try and find another one. So 38 again. Really need to get into those 37s. Oh, Masano corner. That's the corner I struggle with the most probably on this track. I always go in a bit too hot. We're up towards the line. What's this going to be? Three thousandths away from Marco Bezzecchi, so go in second place. We are out of fuel, so we're going to have to go back to the pits. And then we're probably only going to get one more run after this, so we might not actually get pole in this race after all. Actually, it's okay, because we hadn't actually quite run out of fuel when I went back to pits, so we haven't lost several minutes like you usually would. Uh, I think, actually, to be honest, I can go out on the same tyres. It's just more fuel, so... Yeah, we'll head back onto the track on this set of tyres again, then. Let's see if we can find three thousandths of a second. Although Bezeki is on a hot lap as well. Obviously, we're going to have Sam as well. He's going to be doing some sort of lap, and he's not going to be very happy as well. He's going to probably be quite annoyed because we have contact. Because he was on a flying lap as well when we when we touched. It was just he was in my way, so I was trying to go for a pass. And, yeah, I, I mean, I bodged it. It was, it was my fault. I did a massive stop and just went to the side of him. So uh, that would be my my fault for going for a pass. And, well, that's, I guess, the karma for that. Big high side out the first corner. I've just realized as well, bike retrieval's not on. Uh, I meant to turn it back on, uh, so after this session, I'll have to head back, to the, I'll head back to the menu and I'll have to turn bike retrieval back on. I actually forgot that it was disabled in career, because the AI actually have it now, so I think it makes more sense to have it back on. Agora's just gone top. Another 37.7. Uh, and we've just lost the next lap as well, by running on the green. So, I think we're going to struggle to go pole here, because I'm going to have to do everything on the very, very last lap. So now, here we go then. Time to go for one more flying lap, but I've not got much grip on the right-hand side of the tyre left, which you definitely need uh, on a quality lap to slide the bike. It's not so bad in the race conditions, I don't think, but uh, definitely in the qualifying, I'm going to need the, the, that grip on the right-hand side to slide the bike through the corners. So unfortunately I just cut the inside at Caverni on that lap, but it wasn't going to be good enough anyway, I was a good half a second off, so that just ended the session for me because we are out of time. But Ayagora then on pole position ahead of Marco Bezzecchi in second position, myself in third, Fabio Di Antonio in fourth, Remy Gardner fifth, and Sam Lowe's in sixth position. So I've got to say, a bit of a contrast compared to Aragon where we were starting down in 16th position, only 69 thousandths off pole today, so... Yeah, it was only very, very close. We're all within the same tenth of a second, us on the front row. And to be honest, I think my race pace is probably better than the AI's. I mean, as we saw in Aragon, for example, I moved forward compared to where I qualified. So I should have better race pace. I could, I think I could be nice and consistent. So I'm looking forward to this one. We've just got to make a good start off the line. And hope that, to be honest, Sam doesn't get much further up the grid. Because if he, if he finishes sixth and I win, that's a, it's a big swing in the championship. But I'm sure he will probably fight his way through a little bit. However, I have got the fact that my teammates are there, so I've got my teammates uh, sort of sandwiching him, so hopefully they can uh, help me out in the championship a little bit. So then we're down here on the grid, we're looking at Ayagora on pole position, then now we're looking at Marco Bezzecchi. And actually the game is recommending me to use hard tyres, which is interesting, because I was thinking the medium would be better, but I kind of don't want to go against the game, because I don't want to end up running out of tyres. But again, like I was saying, I feel like the medium will last. Just about, although I suppose once the right hand side of the tyre's gone, I might be in a bit of trouble, so I'm going to err on the side of caution. I'll go with the hard tyre, as the game is suggesting, just to be safe, because we are at the front, so we don't need to go with anything anything weird or anything like that, because we're already on the pace, we're already there. We've just got to make it last to the end. We've just got to keep that pace up, so I think going with the tyre the game recommends is probably the right call. So third place on the grid, I've got to try and get off to a good start. I mean, as long as I don't lose too many positions on the first lap, that's... That's good. As long as I'm still in the top five by the end of the first lap, that should be a fairly decent start. But it'd be better if I could move forward, of course. I mean, we saw that I my starts had got better, actually, up until the last race where I did get a bit swamped off the start. We did fight our way back through, so that's definitely something that could happen. I definitely could try and fight my way back through if I do lose a position or two. But either way, I've just got to try and get off the line as best as I can, maybe try and attack the two ahead of me. Riders have taken their places on the grid. Riders in deep concentration with just a few seconds to go until this San Marino Grand Prix begins. So then Agora on pole, Bezeki in second, myself in third. Sam is right behind me as well and he is going to be mad after qualifying. But waiting for the lights to go out here then. At Masano, lights out and away we go. The start itself has not been too bad. 
But the second phase, once again, is where I lose all my time. As we go down towards the first corner, we've got Fabio Di Antonio right in front of us. We've got to try and sweep around the outside of my teammate. There's Digi right ahead of us, trying to get past him as well. Digi's on the inside. I'm sandwiched between Digi and Bezeki here. As we go through this right-hander, they've both gone pretty wide. So we're back up the inside. We're up into second position. Of course, the first sector probably was my best sector on the circuit. So... It definitely would be the sector to try and attack. So we're up to second position. Ayagora then leads the race. I had a little bit of a wobble on the rear there, so I couldn't quite turn in how I wanted to. Bezeki tried to go around the outside, but he's not managed to do it. So we're still in front of Marco Bezeki. Although the AI should get a pretty good run down here. Bezeki right behind me. Agora has already got four tenths of a second over me. So as we break for Quercha, hopefully Bezeki's not the inside. He's not. Agora is a tad wide. So if we could try and capitalise through Tremonto, carry the speed all the way through Coverne, down towards Caro, maybe we can have a bit of a pass because uh, I need to try and pass him before the last sector, really, because that's the sector I've been struggling in. But we mess up Tremonto quite tremendously there. So we've still got a few tenths of a second over Bezeki. I think we should be all right through this section. I don't think he should be able to make a pass, although, as I say that, he'll probably come on the inside through Coverne. He hasn't, so that's definitely good. But it's interesting to see Agora in the lead. Obviously, not ordinarily, if I was a bit further in front in the championship, I probably wouldn't be too bothered about trying to beat him. But because I'm behind, I need to obviously get all the points I can. So I definitely want to try and beat Ayagora. And unfortunately, I couldn't uh, make a pass like I wanted to. And Bezeki's looking at the inside now. The Gora is definitely on his way to checking out. Although, if I can keep in front of Bezeki out this last corner, we get back into my, my sector again. And maybe I can try and attack Ayagora. So up towards the line then. Bezeki's right there. Bezeki's going to go for it into the first corner. But I should put that break him. Yeah, actually, very easily. Agora's very wide through the first corner, in fact, and then tight through the second, which has cost them a fair amount of time. So I guess that's where they lose all their time. And obviously, through the Variante de Parco, they run very, very wide as well. Down towards Rio. If I can get the bike turned for this next right-hander a bit better than I did on the previous lap, that would help. And to be honest, I didn't. I'm struggling with that so far in this race for some reason. So here we go then through Curve Only. We've closed up massively to Iagora. We're going to go around the outside! Whoa! So we haven't quite been able to pull that one off. We're stuck on the curb on the outside. I'm going to have to go off the track. There's no way I'm going to actually keep it on the circuit. I'm going to just slot it behind him as well because I sort of had to go to his outside because he was so slow. And then that resorted to me getting stuck on the outside not being able to get back on the circuit. We didn't gain anything from it. Bezeki though, corner cuts to try and get on the inside of me. So I've got to watch out for that. The AI not above corner cutting to try and overtake me. But that was super, super close. I was closing so much up to Agora through that section there. 1 minute 38.4, Vietti does the fastest up though, another 38.4, so it seems like the AI are basically on my pace, but I probably would have been quicker, of course, on that lap if it wasn't for Agora in front of me. But maybe we could try and pass him in this first sector on this lap through the Variante de Parco. We're closing up once again quite a bit. Can we have an attack down to Rio? Not quite. It's very difficult to outbreak the AI into Rio. They actually aren't too bad, and I think that's probably because they carry less speed into it than I do, so it's very difficult to outbreak them. We might be able to get the switch back through turn 6. Here we go on the power. Use a bit of Palmo 3, here we go in the slipstream. Get a bit of deja vu back to qualifying with Sam Lowe, so we've got to watch out for that. Gonna break a little bit earlier than I did on that occasion. And this time we get away with it, although I didn't actually make the move. Not like I really said it on Sam either, but something's happened behind because Bezeki's dropped to fifth, Digi Antonio's up to third, and Sam is up to fourth. We're trying to go around the outside then of Ayagora. He's really holding me up through Tremonto then. You can see my brake is actually very hot on the front as well, my front brake. But the exit I got, again, is nothing. The AI's drive is so, so good. That's where they're gaining all their lap time on me on every single lap. It's always on the drive. I'm using a bit of Palmo 3 through these fast rights. But on this occasion, not quite as close as I was before. But maybe we can have an attack into Caro. No, not quite. And I've actually gone a bit wide in there. So that actually might give I a little bit of breathing room. Because I'm not as close to him through this section as always. So he actually wants to pull out a little bit of a gap through this last sector. So he won't be under threat at the end of the first sector again on the next lap. Oh, DJ Antonio's on the inside! Whoa! That caught me off guard. That first sector was absolutely dreadful. I think that might have given Agora the break he needed. He's got almost a second. And DJ Antonio's on the inside again. So yeah, I'm on the... Massive attacks from Fabio Di Giantoni. I've hit him on the back now because he sort of brake checked me through turn six. And that's given Agora over a second. Well done, Digi. You've just given Agora the victory. <laughs> and Sam Lowe's is now attacking me down into Quercia. And he's not going to forget qualified, I'm sure about that. So we're a little bit wide through Quercia. Is that going to allow Lowe's on the inside? No, it's not. So we're still in front of Lowe's for now. There's a big pack behind us. 
In fact, it looks like the whole field is sort of in this pack, except Agora, who's now getting away. And after a massively wide through Chimonto, I'm struggling with my front brake now. We're now in the 39s, so it definitely shows you that I am making mistakes, although obviously DJ Antonio would have been a big part of that on the previous lap, why we were so slow, because he was super, super aggressive, which cost us both so much time. But I think Agora's got this one now, we're on the penultimate lap of the race, and he's got 1.4 seconds to me. So we're about to start the last lap of the race. I have made big inroads on Agora. I'm about to do my new personal best and the fastest lap of the race. But the brakes are really hot. And I ran super wide through Chimonto, which is definitely what affected me. Because I probably lost about two or three temps there. And we could definitely have been within striking range of him if I hadn't done that. But I think now he's uh, just going to hang on. Because that first sector also wasn't ideal. I didn't get it flicked over for the Variante de Parco very well. And then obviously I've only got the second sector really to catch him. And then obviously the third would really have to be the one where I have to make the pass. And I think he could get back in front in the fourth sector if I only just passed him in sector three. I've got a trial limits warning. But we're not going to beat him now. Oh, a big mistake. We closed right up to the back of him. But I've got to watch out for Sam now because Sam is only a few temps behind. And this sector I'm so poor at. He's right there. He could outdrag me to the line if I'm not careful. So if we break nice and early for the last corner, just to make sure I try to get the best drive out of here. On the power, up towards the line. Sam is right there, but he's not going to quite beat me. So we just beat Sam Lowe's, but Ayagora takes his first win in Moto2. Oh, that's a shame. That is a shame, because really, it was DJ Antonio that messed us up. And where did he finish in the end? He's not even in the top nine. <laughs> yeah, he finished his 13th. So DJ Antonio, after... Being super aggressive, dive bombing me all over the place and giving Agora a good second. That was it. That that was it. Race over. I couldn't keep up with him anymore because I, I had the pace. Like overall, I had a few temps on Agora, but I couldn't find a second in the time that was left. I gave it a good go. As you saw on the last lap, I really pushed it. I went on the, the green. That's where I was making the most mistakes really throughout the race, I think, was into that right hander running a little bit wide. I think I did that three times and it was only a six lap race, so yeah. <laughs> Uh, quite a bit. Although, to be fair, one of the times was when we went round the outside of I, and uh, I kind of ran out of road. I had to sort of go off the track because I got stuck on a curb and I just couldn't turn. It was better than losing the front. But yeah, good race to Ayagora. Unfortunately, this was a race where I really wanted to conquer some good points back on Sam, and four points is still good. I think that brings the lead down to two, but I, I kind of needed to gain more than that. I probably needed to gain like a good nine because there's, there's some tracks coming up that I'm going to struggle at, mainly probably being Phillip Island and Valencia. So I kind of wanted to gain a few more points on Sam, but still got to close up to him a little bit. And as I said, in the championship, we're now two points behind Sam Lowe's. Remy Gardner, 40 points behind. Marco Bezzecchi, 50 points behind. Chelsea Nivietti, 76 points behind. So you can see it pretty much is just between myself and Sam. Although Remy still has an outside shot. And I suppose if you're saying Remy has an outside shot, only 10 points further back is Bezzecchi. He definitely probably still has an outside shot as well. Only been two race wins off the championship lead. But really, I think the championship is mostly between myself and Lowe's. In the team's championship, then, we now have a 120-point lead over Elfmark VDS. 167 over Sky VR 46. And that's just because, obviously, Idemitsu uh, were the ones that beat us. And they only have 89 points as a team. They just got 25 there. So that tells you how much Agora probably has been boosted in the last update, which definitely is fair. He definitely deserves it. But we'll head back to the career hub now, end off the episode there, and honestly, it's been a pretty good one. Especially this race, we were back on the pace, so that's exactly what I wanted to see. Because I, I was kind of thinking that I'd lost my way with this game a little bit, and I was going to really struggle. Although, it is Masano, that should be a win, but I didn't win there last year either. So, I think the AI probably are a little better, but more than that, it was just the fact that I had Digi Antonio just send up the inside about three times and cost me a second. So then we negated anything we lost in the previous weekend by gaining 23,400 reputation, which takes up to 311,700. And on the credits, we're gaining 13,137, which takes us up to 214,815 credits. As for the R&D, we did pass a couple of events, but you can see how much we've got. We've got 11,000 on the engine, absolutely ridiculous. And we've uh, got an update actually coming in the next couple of weeks uh, for the engine, so we'll be able to spend some more of that. And then we've also got 3,000 on both the frame and the ECU, which probably should be enough to see out the season. So then, we actually have a notification on the technical staff. So if we go and look at that, there's a new telemetry supplying. George Morgan. So a lot better on the engine, but a lot worse on the frame as well. I'll leave it for now, because of course we only really need to hire them going into MoGP. And I do need to remember as well that the, the better the staff, the more expensive. But I think A++ is probably better. Uh, obviously, that guy's got a better engine, but his frame is only 10. Like, that's pretty poor. So I think I'm going to reject him. I'm definitely never going to want someone with a 10 frame. But Charlie Watson, that's definitely possible, because if I got uh, somebody that was a bit better on the frame to balance him out a little bit, 
that would help with the, uh, the research data. But that brings this episode to a close then, so a pretty exciting one. Obviously, Misano was really good to be back at the front fighting compared to where we were in Aragon. We were absolutely miles off the pace, just didn't have it, unfortunately. But that's just the nature of the track, really. I, I was thinking that, to start with, that it was down to the fact that I hadn't played for a while, but to be honest, I think it is just the, the nature of the track. To start with, obviously, it was down to that when I was like three, four seconds off. But once I got within a second, it was just down to the fact that that's not a good track for me. Maybe if I set the bike up a little bit better, probably could have found a bit more time, but... I don't really mess around the setups. I think I probably could have probably made one for this bike. But I hope you guys did enjoy that one. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Hope you're all staying safe and I shall see you in the next one.